Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back. Um, today we're just going to go over uh, a couple of the tools here in Fusion and how to use them to quickly and efficiently design uh, and lay out a catch-all tray or an EDC tray or whatever kind of tray you would like to make because I like to make trays. There's a lot of different ways to do these things. This is just the uh, way that I've come up with. But uh, maybe you can pick up something that will help make your process um, a little bit easier. So the first thing I do when I'm designing a tray is you'll see we're kind of in an isometric view here according to the little doohickey in the top right. So I'm gonna start off with a sketch. When I'm sketching something, I just wanna look at it from the top down. So then we go over here to the top left and we select create sketch. And then we have to select which plane we want that sketch to be on. Um, we can select any of these planes in a three-dimensional space, but for all intents and purposes, we're just going to look at it from the, uh, the top down. So we select this plane, and now we're in sketch mode. Um, you can make your tray any size you want, and any shape you want, obviously. Um, but today we're going to be using this two-point rectangle tool. And it's going to want us to select our first point. So I usually put it at the origin here, but it, truthfully, it doesn't matter where you put it. And then I'll just drag out a random rectangle and click again to, uh, to set the shape. The next thing I like to do is use this sketch dimension tool up here to add, um, well, my dimensions to it. So I'll click on this line here, pull out and click again, and I can set how tall I want this to be in inches. And uh, I believe my piece of stock I'm going to use is uh, 12 inches tall. So we can zoom out and see the whole thing now. And while still using the sketch dimension tool, I'll select that side, pull it out, click, and get that uh, dialog box up again. And I'll say, uh, let's try 17. That looks about right. Uh, you know aesthetically what I think might look good um, but if we did want to change it we could go in here and double click that and say I don't know 18 so now we just have a rectangle that's 12 by 18 and if that's all we wanted we'd be more or less ready to go um, but I like rounded edges on things chamfers and, and radius and fillets and um, so up here we're gonna select the fillet tool and there's a couple different ways to make this work but I like to select the first line and then the second line now this is a huge radius so let's try 0.25 zoom in a little bit it looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and do that for a couple of these other ones here just to give it uh, a little more interest in the shape. It's not just a plain old rectangle. And again, with all of these dimensions in sketch mode, if I change my mind, I can just double click it and uh, change whatever, you know, I want that dimension to be in press enter. So this is all fine and well. Um, we have the outside edge of a tray, um, but we're going to want a, uh, a pocket on the inside, so typically what I'll do is I'll do another two-point rectangle, and I'll just drag something kind of arbitrary out, and then use my sketch dimension tool. So here, the outside perimeter of the tray uh, is 12 inches, so let's make this 11 inches, and that means that there's going to be a half an inch on either side. So we can select the outside of this box and uh, the corresponding side of this box, pull it out to the side here, and say 0.5. And now it's going to be perfectly centered. What is this, vertically? Because there's going to be a 0.5 inch border here and a 0.5 inch border here. Similarly, we can do the same um, with these sides. 
So we have 18 inches on our outside perimeter. Let's call this, um, well, for you know, interest, let's call it 15. We'll put an inch of perimeter on each side. And we'll say one inch. Oh, I guess that's actually um, one and a half inches on each side. So we'll go ahead and change this to 16. Now it's centered up. So what we've got now is a pocket sketch in the outside edge sketch. We'll add a little bit of a fillet here because we like fillets. Um, 0.25 is usually pretty good. I don't know what this warning is about down here. All right, so now we've just got a uh, basic outline of what our tray is going to look like. Um, we've used the rectangle tool, we've used the sketch dimension tool to tell it what size we want everything, and we've used the fillet tool to put some radius. We've also used the sketch dimension tool to center this pocket inside of the perimeter. At this point, all we really need to do is click finish sketch. We have a sketch now, and we can begin to extrude it as it's only a 2D shape. So typically what I'll do is I'll click this part here and say I want the tray to be um, one inch tall. So I'll select extrude over here. We'll press distance, we'll say one and okay. But now we just kind of have this uh, picture framey looking thing. So what we can also do is go back to our sketch, which is now hidden, so we have to unhide it. Select the interior. And we want that to be usually an eighth inch is good, which is 0.125. Uh, operation should typically always be join. So now we have a tray. We'll hide our sketch here real quick. This is what it's going to look like if we were to cut it out right now. And it's functional, but it's, it's kind of boring. Um, so there's a lot of other little tricks that we can use to add some interest here. There's a chamfer. So you select um, from modify, chamfer, and then you select which edge you would like to chamfer. So let's do this inside edge and we'll chamfer at 0.125 and then press OK. And it really is just that easy. We've added a chamfer to the inside edge. And there's a reason I selected uh, an eighth inch and that is because the tool that I'm going to use to cut this chamfer is a quarter inch. Um, but we'll get to that when, when I start talking about toolpaths. We're going to add another chamfer on this outside edge. And this one, I think we're going to make it a little bit bigger. We'll just go for the full quarter inch. So now we've added some interest. My shift key doesn't work very well. So now we've added a little bit of interest. It's not a totally boring tray. What I actually want to do now is show you the tray we're going to be working on. Now that you understand the basic principles of the tools that I use to get here. This is the sketch of a 17 by 12 tray test version 2. And let's see, sketches. This used to have dimensions on it. Let me see if I can find a way to bring those back up. Let's go to edit sketch. There they are. Um, so you can see I've used a lot of dimensions and a lot of radius here. Um, radii. 
uh, it's a mess and you should never ever ever lay things out like this if you're going to be passing them out or passing them on to anybody else because uh, they're going to have a whole terrible time trying to read this um, but for all intents and purposes like I said we're using a 12 inch uh, piece of wood uh, we're going to go 17 inches long I centered up uh, this interior pocket but then I broke it up into multiple pieces um, all these numbers were very deliberately chosen I used quarter inch radius because uh, the diameter of my cutter is a quarter inch uh, so it won't be completely fully engaged when it's cutting this slot which happens to be a half inch that'll fit like a like a pin or something uh, the borders in between all these pieces are a half inch and I also did that on purpose because I'm going to put a chamfer on the inside edges here and the chamfer is going to be an eighth inch so if I have an eighth inch chamfer on this line and an eighth inch chamfer on this line that ends up being a quarter inch total eaten up by chamfer and a quarter inch flat in the middle that's just some design considerations real quick. I'm going to go ahead and model this out in a 3D using extrusions and then the next video is going to be about how to generate tool paths to get the uh, shapes we want uh, out of the cutter efficiently. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, gripes, um, if you want to tell me how bad this new microphone is, uh, by all means please do. But if you like these kind of videos, go ahead and subscribe uh, because I do plan on making plenty more later. Uh, thanks and have a good day.